Galen, you and I have both been obsessed with consciousness for, I guess, our entire adult <laughs> lives in one way or another. But, uh, you know, I have to say that your work has been a great uh, asset to me personally. Uh, not, not just your specific uh, um, uh, panpsychism is the real materialism, but, but more your, your way of thinking and your approach, which is definitely different than, than others, and it has really been a, an enrichment to me. So what I'd like to do is, is, is just get your overarching sense of how you approach consciousness. Sure. Well, um, where I start is in disagreeing with just about everybody. <laughs> uh, about <laughs> That's two, why I like you. About two things, which is everybody starts off saying, first, that there's a mystery of consciousness. Mm. And second, saying that our task is to explain the existence of consciousness. And the trouble with those, those things is that uh, they beg the question in a fundamental way, where I'm using beg the question in its original sense, not, not raise the question, but <laughs> basically they, they presuppose their answer to the question before the other side gets a chance to say what it is. So I'll, I'll explain that. So first of all, they say there's a mystery of consciousness. Um, the presupposition there, the thing they're helping themselves to, is that the idea that the world is basically physical in the sense of non-conscious, so we have to wonder where in the world the consciousness mm -hmm. came from, and it's a mystery. How could it possibly happen? And then you get these familiar metaphors. People talk about the soggy bra gray brain, or they say it's just meat. <laughs> and this is, and how could we possibly get consciousness from that? But they've already gone wrong as far as I'm concerned, because they think they know more about the nature of physical stuff than they yeah. actually do. So they, they beg the question in saying there's a mystery here. Mm. And that fits actually also with the idea about what we, our task is to explain it, because if you think that's your task, it's because you think uh, that it wasn't already there right at the start. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I do hold the view that the best theory of how things are is that Consciousness in some form was there right at the start. And so there isn't a question about how do we explain its existence. Mm. We don't have to get it out of the non-conscious. And um, when you have that approach, where do, you, where do you start then? You start with consciousness, and then how do you proceed from there? Step one, we know that consciousness exists. Step two, I, like many other people, believe that everything is physical. Uh, so, therefore, consciousness is physical. That seems like a simple syllogism. Yeah, you know, that's a valid, <laughs> um, valid argument. Um, but in that case, what that shows us, first of all, is that we don't know what we thought we knew about the nature of the physical, because everyone just automatically assumes that the physical is in its basic or ultimate nature non-conscious, and there is really no good reason for holding that view. Mm. Uh, what happens if you do is that you, get, you go back to the mystery, i.e., how do we get consciousness from the utterly and wholly non-conscious, and then there's only one thing you can do, which is to posit some sort of radical emergence of the conscious from the non-conscious. But radical emergence is profoundly at odds with all normal scientific practice. It's directly contrary to what people call methodological naturalism. Mm -hmm. It's not appealed to anywhere else in the whole of science. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the cost. That's the price you have to pay if you start from the view that matter in its fundamental nature is wholly non-conscious. Mm -hmm. That cost is too, too high a price to pay. <laughs> so that's why I think that there must be consciousness in some form right at the bottom of things. Mm. That's, that's the argument. Mm. And therefore, that you, you get that, that panpsychism, which, in, which is consciousness, is, is uh, ubiquitous, is the real materialism. Uh, real materialism, as I define it, ju is just the view that, uh, uh, that you're a realist about consciousness, that you, you're a materialist, but you're, you're a realist about consciousness. Mm. That's the definition of real materialism. Panpsychism is really a pretty hopeless word because it's used to cover so many things. Uh, uh, so all, all that the little argument I just gave you shows is, it doesn't show yet that everything is somehow conscious. It just shows that there must be consciousness at the bottom of things. 
And what, what, what are, have been reactions to that way of thinking? Um, oh, um, ridicule. <laughs> 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 um, there was a, a recent survey of, uh, there's a man called Brian Leiter who runs a very influential yeah, yeah. blog, and he asked the question, what are the most absurd views in philosophy? And it didn't come top, I have to say, but it did come third. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people are very, very fixed in this idea that they kind of know something absolutely for sure about the physical, mm. which is that it is in its fundamental nature not conscious mm. in any way. And there is absolutely no evidence or justification for holding that view. But that sort of blows people's minds. They say, what do you mean? Um, so I like to say, what evidence uh, is there, in fact, for the existence of non-conscious yeah. stuff? And the answer is zero. <laughs> it's just a huge assumption. Tremendously natural. And it's perfectly valid in everyday life, the distinction between the mental and the physical. Uh, it's just, as Russell says, you should not import it into philosophy or science. <laughs>